In this short video, we'll share some of our experiences interviewing some educated folks about weather forecasting products. I initiated my first interview without much of a plan, simply following the directions without prompting, and generally had a response like this to all of the products. Uh, this this dev is really busy. Yeah. Um, CPC con. Yeah, I can't tell really where. Maybe that. I, I don't know what CPC con means. Um, I actually don't know what that means either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm guessing this is something projected for the future. Um, what these symbols mean, I'm not too sure. I'm not a science major, so... Um... This led Maribeth and I, upon collaboration, to develop a methodology we could approach the rest of our interviewees with. We decided to use four individuals with different backgrounds and use three different products. The process, what we told each interviewee, was that they would be given the three products along with definitions for any acronyms. They would have one minute to interpret each product, and then they would have to explain to us what information the figure is trying to convey. Following are some selected clips from our interviews. So we've got the months on the X and the sea surface, te sea surface temperature on the Y. And I think this is predictions for El Nino something oscillations. And these are the different models, I would bet. So one model predicts sea surface temperatures to be relatively constant throughout the entire year, whereas some of these models predict them to be slightly lower and then increase throughout the summer, whereas other models predict it to decrease throughout the year, the temperature of the sea surface. Alright, so what it looks like this one is explaining is um, they have three uh, different maps of, um, or like, the, I guess the first three are like um, probability that uh, certain areas of Africa will receive um, above normal rainfall, normal rainfall, or below average rainfall. And in each map, um, the darker areas indicate um, the areas that are most likely to get whatever that map represents. Like, for example, like the dark areas in the above map are um, the areas that are most likely to receive above average rainfall. And likewise, um, the darker areas in the below map are the ones that are most probable to get below average rainfall. And as far as what the rebuilt one means, I can't say I'm too sure on that. So I think that this figure, um, I guess, number one, based on the y-axis, is talking about sea surface temperatures, um, because it's calling them an anomaly. I think it's talking about a departure from some sort of um, long-term average or mean. Um, and the color scheme, I think, is trying to convey that there's lots of different methods of predicting how this anomaly will change through time. Um, and while there isn't very much um, agreement between them, uh, they all kind of predict that the anomaly will be decreasing over the, I guess I didn't look at these months, but over about the next year or so. Um, and yeah, I think it's also, I guess, probably trying to convey that there's not very much certainty um, in what this sea surface temperature anomaly is going to do. After each interview, he had finished explaining all three products to us. We then asked a follow-up question. So the final follow-up question that I want to ask is, um, how can these figures be of use for water resource managers? Um, what these two maps do is, like, they can indicate, um, like, a uh, like air, it, it signifies at different periods, like when um, there will be heavy amounts of rainfall, when there will be like less than normal amounts of rainfall. So I guess you can use these forecasts to um, describe like what areas would probably need more um, attention from reservoir, reservoirs, I guess, or less attention from reservoirs. And I guess it's just good to predict where the dry areas will be and which areas you can expect to need to supply more water to. I guess. You'll probably have to release your reservoir more often, or um, maybe if it's like. You're, it's predicted to have a ton of above normal events, and probably not just for the next few months, but for the next few decades, you might have to re-engineer things to fit the scenarios that are coming.
coming. This interview process illustrated that there were three primary factors affecting an individual's ability to interpret the graphs. All interviewees articulated frustration with not knowing definitions. Responses to the follow-up question were fairly predictable. Individuals stated that if the weather was forecasted to be wetter or drier, a reservoir manager would need to provide more or less water for users. One interviewee differentiated between how short-term versus long-term forecasting would shift water resource engineering management practices. In general, the follow-up question was easier to understand than forecast products. This demonstrates that effective communication is a key for relaying scientific knowledge.